spoke to his prophet, saying, "It is servant." You ready? Everybody ready? So the first song that I thought of, the one entitled "If I Be the Glory." Can't think of a better song than that. And we're going to sing one entitled "Faithfulness." Can't think of a better one than that either. So let's stand together. We're going to sing "For God Be the Glory." Great things He has done. <clears throat> Father, Lord, we thank you that we can come together tonight, and Lord, we thank you for your servants, Pastor and Rhonda, and I pray that our time tonight would be sweet for us to express our love and our appreciation for them, and Father, we know all that they have done is to be faithful to you and to live, uh, to glorify you with their lives, but it's good for us to take some time and share uh, what they mean to us, because they've had a great influence on our lives. Pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can be seated as long as you can sing sitting down. <laughs> Let's, we're going to sing one more song titled Faithful Men. <laughs> Thank you. 
this morning that his heart is, is he is going to minister people here. We've grown close to him, and he's grown, grown close to us. But his desire is to see us move on as faithful men and women serving Jesus Christ our Lord. And that's what he's invested his life in that. And now he's going to invest his life in training preacher boys to go out and, and pastor churches to train faithful men. I, I think that's incredible. So we're here for a wonderful time tonight. Uh, sharing some testimonies. We'll have a few other things. Pastor Rob's going to come and we'll share some. We'll read that part of the service and then we'll be back again. It's to be a testimony service. When Dana and I left Michigan after 19 years there, they had a farewell service for us. And it was an evening service like this and there were testimonies and then there was a fellowship time afterwards. And there was a lot expressed to us. And I will tell you that probably the best gift that you can give the Goatures is just expressing your appreciation to them. That meant a lot to Dana and I when we were leaving Michigan. One, I thought, who are they talking about? I'm not sure that I'm the guy that all these nice words are about. Um, but two, it deeply meant a lot to me and to my wife that we had made some kind of difference while we were there. And Pastor and Rhonda have made a difference. They've been a tremendous influence in our lives, and this gives you an opportunity to express that. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be lengthy. And what we've done is we've asked three couples uh, to give testimonies up front here, and between each one, we're going to pass the mics. So we've got one on each side, and if you'd like to uh, share something, uh, from your heart to Pastor and Rhonda, please do. I encourage you to do that. And um, so we're going to begin this evening with Vance and Marie. Vance and Marie will come up. Vance has been in Pastor's uh, discipleship group, and Marie has been in Rhonda's discipleship group. And I know uh, they mean a lot, Pastor and Rhonda mean a lot to them. Yeah, somehow we didn't end up in church discipline after that either. <laughs> um, I'm going to try to get through this without crying, so it'll be easy if you don't look at me. <laughs> uh, Rhonda approached me shortly after they were here and asked if I would be interested in, in joining a D group, and my initial reaction was, pastor's wife? That means like they're going to know my stuff. A little scary, but I decided yes. And when I went to the first class, I just kind of unloaded some stuff. Like, I, I want to be up front about my issues. I'm stubborn. And I'm, you know, most of you know me. This isn't a shock. And then she introduced the book, which was The Excellent Wife. And a few years previously, a former pastor had introduced that book, and I read a chapter and thought it was horrible. <laughs> I was like, who wrote this? The person's terrible. And the guy who, I was really upset with the pastor for recommending it, and I was like, I'm not doing this. So clearly I wasn't in a good place in the walk, but pastor's wife asked, and I decided I was going to actually give it a chance. And it really changed my life. <laughs> but Rhonda was so, so patient and kind and loving. And I remember, yeah, don't make me feel better <laughs> but, and I remember her saying things. It's not about your husband. It's about you. And it's about being obedient to God. And do you really love God? Do you really trust God? Are you ready to be faithful to God? And I would say, but, 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 <laughs> but Rhonda, you don't understand. You know, he'll do this. And it makes me so mad. And she'd say, Marie, are you picturing Christ behind your husband? Would you say that if Jesus were standing behind your husband? Well, of course I wouldn't. Well, he is, Marie. He's standing right there. And his sin, it doesn't excuse yours. And she's like, I think maybe you have a problem being vulnerable. And she shared some personal stuff from her life and their early marriage and how they worked through things, which was shocking for me. I mean, I don't think a lot of us stop to think that pastors are people <laughs> and their wives are people. Um, and so I went home and said to my husband, you know, I try to act all tough and that life would go on without you, and I don't need you, and I don't need this, but really, deep down, 
I want you, and I want you to always want me, and I don't want to feel scared, so I don't want to open up. And it was so hard to do when I did it. And then my husband said to me the next day how much it really meant to him. And it just really was the beginning of real growth. And so we kind of got, we went through that whole book. We met every week for a couple of hours, and we did that for over two years. And there was just a lot of, of growth in me, a change for the better, an understanding of God. Poor Pastor Rob, because I started going through processes of reading the whole Bible, and I would send him, because I didn't want to torment Rhonda and Pastor with everything. So I'd send him all my random questions. What's a wave offering? Wave? <laughs> and why, when a woman had a baby, if it was a girl, did she have to give a, ba a bigger sin offering than if it was a boy? That's not fair. I mean, <laughs> so these are the kind of things that poor Rob got a little sample of that Rhonda lived with for two years. <laughs> um, but it came to the point where eventually she called and said, I think maybe it's time for you to take a D group. And I was like, no, eh, I don't think so. She's like, well, you know, we've been talking about it. So then she asked me a couple weeks later and said, did you pray about it? I said, no. She says, why not? Oh, I don't, I don't really want the answer. Kind of like when Pastor and Rhonda told me they were leaving. It was God's will. And I was like, well, I'm just going to say Abraham argued with God a couple times and it worked. So I'm going to try that. <laughs> and, you know, I was going to pray about it, but I didn't. Because I didn't really want to hear God's answer on that one. And, and Rhonda's kind of worked me through that. But going through the whole process, she was my Paul. Not perfect, but really trying to follow Jesus and really loving me even when I was difficult. And believe me, I can be difficult. <laughs> right, Lori? <laughs> um, and, and through my stubbornness, and never once did she make me feel judged or unworthy or or that pastor was going to think less of us, never did I feel unloved. And pastor had a D group with Vance, and it's intimidating, you know? He was like, you know, am I supposed to be real with him? You know, but he was even saying on the way over here, he was always kind to me, always. Always understanding, never harsh, never judgmental. And, and when my mom died, you know, he's like, of course I'll come... I'll come do the funeral. Of course, I'll drive all the way out in the middle of nowhere, Elmore, and do this. Um, and when I had a surgery, we're going to bring you a meal. No, I don't need one. I'm, we're good. No, Marie, we're going to do this. Just accept it. Let us do this. Just always loving, always kind, always there, never, never harsh, always, but never letting us off the hook either. You know, Vance went into class one night. And we had had an argument. I'm sure it was over something dumb. It usually is something really dumb. <laughs> and he said to Pastor, you know, I really blew it tonight. I was just being selfish. And Pastor said, well, you know, Vance, we're men, and we're supposed to protect our wives. And sometimes we have to protect them from ourselves and our selfishness. Um, and he's just constantly encouraging and, and not looking down on people, constantly saying, follow me while I follow Christ. So when I think of Rhonda, I think of Paul. And when I think of Pastor, I think of Paul and I think of Malachi. Sometimes his sermons make me really mad, and it's usually because they're very convicting. And I really think you could focus on other people besides me. <laughs> and probably the rest of the church would like to hear about other people. <laughs> but, but you know, when I get really mad and I'm fired up, I realize I'm mad because I'm being convicted. And that's what I need. I don't need to be comfortable. I don't need to, to feel comfortable and like everything's okay. Um, and then, you know, we don't always have to agree about everything, but we can, we can love each other and lift each other up. And that is what we've always gotten. Just always, this is what God's word says, and that's what's important. And this is what God wants, and that's what's important. And it doesn't matter what happened here, but we have to move beyond it. We have to move towards growth. We can't backslide. And so... When I said to Pastor, you can't leave because I've grown so much. And it's you and Ron. He said, no, Marie, that's God. And uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll get on, but it won't be the same without Paul and, <laughs> and Malachi and, and the way that you just unconditionally loved us. Thank you. Be good. 
for Vance and Marie to stand together while Marie gave that testimony. And you can just see how they both had such a great influence on them. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to pass the mic, maybe take two testimonies from the seats there, and then uh, we will have uh, Chris and Betsy give a testimony. But first, who would like to give a testimony? Martha, behind you, Kim, all the way back there, Martha. We're going to ask, right, well, like we did this morning. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, as a current member of Marie's D group, thanks a lot. Because <laughs> guess who's now had to go through the excellent wife? <laughs> um, seriously, though, I want to thank you both for many reasons. And as a diehard strong Vermonter, we don't always get along, Texas and Vermont, but we have so much in common. And I think. One of the, the beautiful things about having you here is that we don't always have to agree on every single little thing, but God has brought you here to accomplish so much good. And I have grown up in this church. I have seen many pastors come through and go, and I am thankful for your investment in us, that you're investing in this ministry, and that you understand and, and you're helping remind us it's not one particular pastor, it's God's work is here. And... For those of us who have been here for a few of these transitions, it's hard. It's hard to get attached. And when you do get attached, it's hard to let you go. But we are thankful for your time here and your investment in us and thankful that we can be strong and independent and that's okay and that's a good thing. And, and God has put us here to continue the work. And so we are thankful for your investment in us um, your investment in our children, in our families, in the school, um, all of these blessings that we have. And each pastor who has come here has a different ministry and a different task to accomplish. And so we are thankful for what you have accomplished here. And if we do get to go visit you in South Carolina, we will try and get some Palmer Lane creamies to you somehow. We'll try and figure it out. Logan, did you want to say something to Pastor? Come on up here, buddy. Let me have, can I have that mic? Right, Logan, I want you to speak right into that real loud so everyone can hear you. So I'm just thankful that Pastor gets to teach all of men to be pastors and that we will try to. Uh, about one more before Chris and Betsy come. Yes. I was thinking on the way here tonight um, about the first weekend, I believe it was, that Pastor was here. And how he drove over to Waitsfield to one of Anna's in laws um, funerals. And um, we just asked if he wanted to follow us home so we could go over the App Gap. And he fell in love with Ramon at the App Gap. <laughs> and then we knew we could trust him. <laughs> <laughs> Chris and Betsy? I'm, I should say I'm kind of a quintessential guy. Me trying to describe my uh, thoughts and feelings is like a toddler trying to cram a round block into a square hole. And you use a hammer and you just keep hammering at it. Um, so 
I usually I'm fairly short with what I what I say, but um, so yeah, I'm going to start with Pastor Goch. I've been in this depot for several years now, and that's it's been a great blessing. Um, I yeah, I don't even know where where to start on 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 that. Um, just yeah, he's always compassionate and um, yeah, so. I, I have to do something. I don't know if I'll be able to, to speak to that. But oftentimes, you know, when people talk to the pastor, you know, it's hey, the pastor's somewhere up here, and we're some somewhere down there. But that's really not not the case with with Pastor Gochu. He um, one of the things I, I do uh, like about him and, and have cherished about him is um, one that he's from Texas, and mm -hmm. I'll explain that um, he is very. Um, um, yeah, uh, what do they call it? A quick talker, a straight talker, I, I would say, and that's near and dear to my heart. I'm, if, any, nobody, or if anybody doesn't really know, I'm, I'm from the Netherlands, and most people are there are very direct, which I greatly appreciate. And the, the, like people, a lot of people like to beat around the bush. I personally, I'm very bad at it. A lot of things fly over my head, so sometimes you'll see a little bit of a vacant look on my, on my face when people say something. And my wife can attest to this. That that is the reason why, because I, uh, it just doesn't register. So directness is is a good thing, and Pastor has that. And um, but yeah, if you really want to get to know Pastor, do some projects with him. Uh, he yeah. loves to do his, uh, he loves to do projects, and um, he's good at it too. But uh, one one more thing that he likes even better is the fellowship that we get from from those. Um, yeah. Um, when we when we do the projects together, and also that he can, um, yeah, speak truth into people's lives and uh, share the gospel, and um, yeah, build build a relationship um, with that, and that is something. Um, one of the things that I walked away with is um, really the discipleship which Pastor has so often talked about, and and he lives it also, and. Um, to have a, a group of uh, group of men and, and people around him that he can live the gospel with, and that's really what I've got from it. And the other thing is to know what biblical friendship looks like, and that's something. Until I I came here, I honestly I didn't know what that looked like, and so I'm very grateful for that, and that is something I will always be thankful for for both him and for for Miranda also. Um, how they've served uh, this church um, tirelessly throughout uh, throughout the years, and um, I will always be grateful for them and consider them dear friends, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's not really my forte, as you know. Sound booth a lot. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> all right, the pastor go to that I've gotten to know over the last five years. Uh, when my family first came to this church, we had been saved for a few years already. Um, the very small church we were at before had a wonderful pastor who preached uh, from the Bible, which was hard to find. Um, but unfortunately, they dissolved when they moved away. Um, we tried a few different churches in the area, and we just couldn't find anything like it. So we decided to give Trinity a chance, since our um, daughter was going there. And for the first time, um, I heard <laughs> I heard some very energetic preaching, some very um, biblical preaching, and I was just... I was blown away, and then we decided to make this our church home. Um, we felt like we finally found what we were looking for. Um, and it was very theological, which I wasn't used to, um, instead of just the entertainment style of preaching. Uh, from then on, we knew we were in the right place and under the right kind of preacher. And um, the knowledge of theology and doctrine that Pastor Gocher has, has inspired me to grow exponentially and have you know, a desire to understand the Bible deeper and to get to know God more, um, which I never really had felt before in my life. And um, <clears throat> pastor's always ready with at least one to five books. <laughs> if you have a question about something, I, I just, I love that. I wish I could read better. As you can see, I'm having a hard time reading this. Um, and I feel very blessed that over the past few years, working in the office, I've had easy access to Pastor Gocher and Pastor Rob and Pastor Randy for all sorts of theological questions and advice and biblical counsel. Um, I know not everybody gets that. Um, and 
Uh, Pastor Gocher has brought us into a discipleship culture that has strengthened the relationships amongst the body of our church. Um, before D groups, I I knew people a little bit here, but it's really um, being in Rhonda's Z group. I got to know Rhonda really well, and then um, the other ladies that were in our group, and then I got to do my own, which I never, ever in a million years. I remember when I first joined Rhonda's group, I'm like, there's no way I can do this. <laughs> there's no way I can be this kind of teacher of any other people. But just going through the foundations, which is a wonderful, wonderful study, um, and now I'm going through the walk with my current D group. Um, it's just, it's brought on some amazing conversations and I just don't feel like I would have had that any other, in any other church. Um, and I, the D group has been very valuable to, um, I think, to our church because it's not just a Bible study. You're bringing the Bible into people's lives and, use, and applying it. <laughs> um, and yes, I've, I've watched as Pastor Gocher has made a lot of hard decisions and I've been thankful that we have someone who is who has so much life experience and cares so much about this church. He never takes any decision lightly that's made here. Um, and I always know that his yes means yes and his no means no, even if it hurts my pride once in a while. <laughs> um, and I've learned a lot of skills working in the office and um, gotten to be part of many of the wonderful projects like Chris was talking about. Um, we've got the bathrooms done in the office, two out of three. That was something I've been you know, dreaming about for years. <laughs> happened. Um, and I've also learned a lot of things I'll probably never use, like the best golf swing technique or how to kill a deer from a tree. <laughs> and, uh, but his wisdom and experience are sure to benefit many students to come that he'll be teaching at Bob Jones. And I'm excited to see what next right step the Lord has for all of us. How many of you knew that Pastor got a deer this week? All right. <laughs> wow, news travels fast. <laughs> he went nuts. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the deer was in the tractor. He said his dog went nuts around the tractor because the deer was in the bucket of the tractor to get it over here. But I thought that was so neat, that uh, sort of a going away gift for Pastor from the Lord. Uh, poor guy had been hunting that deer for six years. <laughs> <laughs> so God just stuck it right from now. It's, it's actually, if you'll listen to his story, it's pretty amazing how he, how he got it. But we like to have fun with that. So, All right, let's open it to the floor again. A couple more testimonies. Um, right behind you there, Kim. Hello? Oh, great. It's working. Okay. Um, so it's just been... <laughs> sometimes it doesn't. Um, it's just been so encouraging to have you guys here... Um, it's also really convicting whenever pastor starts, you know, to get going in a message. And I'm like, kind of like what you were saying earlier. It's like, you can stop targeting me now. I get the point. Um, but it's just been so interesting to see how the Lord has used you, like both of you, like Rhonda, you and the school, and just seeing just how loving and kind you are when you come in and the kids love you and you too, pastor, and just and watching you up there and seeing how on fire you are for Christ is so encouraging and, again, convicting. It's like, hey, uh, you have a pretty good role model up there, you know? So it's just, it's really helped me grow in my faith watching just you two and how you serve the Lord and, and Rhonda, how you are so behind Pastor and how you're just, you're there for him and how you can also be playful. I love your little comments when he does certain things. It's so funny. Um, <laughs> But I'm really going to miss you guys and, and having that encouragement. But I know you're going to be such an encouragement to everyone you meet when you, when you go to your next step. So I'm excited to see what the Lord's going to do with you. Thank you. Others? Yeah. This, this is a short testimony and probably a little bit unique. 
But one of the biggest blessings I've had is actually be able to talk these arcane terms like debits and credits and things that help the ministry kind of run. And they actually knew what I meant. <laughs> you know, and it didn't matter, you know, whether I was talking to Pastor or Rhonda, they actually got that. It was so that's very refreshing. I will certainly remember that as well as uh, Pastor many of the conversations we've been able to have. So I've had it uh, over, I don't know, we, we been, haven't been here the whole five years. Uh, we came back to here. And uh, I grew up in a pastor's home, so I know that pastors are, are not perfect people. They, you know, pastors are people just like we are. And, and the Lord uses all of the different characteristics and personality traits that a person has to pastor a church. And, and we need all of those. I got to tell you, I have never met anybody in my life that has more energy than Pastor Gocher. He's like the ever-ready bunny on steroids. <clears throat> that the, the, he's always, I don't think his brain ever stops, and certainly the, the, he's done a lot of projects, but he would invest all that time in any one of us at any time. And I think I've heard that loud and clear is his investment and love in all of us is, is, uh, is clear. And, and I really appreciate that. And uh, along with the, I, I thought the other day when I heard about the deer, it's like God winked at him and said, hey, on your way out of town here, take, uh, you're going to need to get a deer this week. But we had one of those other moments back a couple months ago. If you ever played golf with Pastor Gocher, he's a good golfer, but he's very competitive. It's not that he likes to win, he just doesn't like losing, you know? So, <laughs> <clears throat> so anyways, we played golf down at the Wilds Golf Tournament. And, uh, and, it, and it finished on an incredible high note. We won that tournament by one stroke at the very end. That was the, one of the funnest times that we've had in a long time. And I think Pastor, that God winked at him again and said, hey, you know what, you need to win this tournament. <clears throat> and, and so, anyways, it wasn't that we won. It was just the camaraderie with, with the, another pastor from Connecticut that was there. And, and Pastor's son was there as well. So the four of us played you know, you play golf here four hours riding around in a cart, and, and we, we just had a blast for four hours, and then the Lord let us win that tournament by one stroke. So I have many memories of Pastor Gocher, and I, I am thrilled at what the Lord is going to take this man to do, because I can't think of anybody better to train young preacher boys than somebody who has been a pastor the way he has. So we'll be praying for you, and we will, you will be back here too. We'll, we'll get some, we'll get some ideas. He'll, he'll be back here. All right, others. I see Jackson back there. Jackson, come up to the mic. Isn't it wonderful to see these young men? I'm just thankful for Pastor and that he can um, go teach other people to preach the gospel. Uh, Kaylee Barkham back there. Hey, is it working? Yeah. Um, um, I think I shared this with you, but I want to share it again. We were at a parent teacher conference with Miss Gordon um, last year or two years ago. I can't remember. Last year. And um, she told us how he had mentioned in journal entries and a couple of times that um, she said, you know, what do you want to be if you grow up and you said a pastor? And so um, we had heard, you know, she said it in a few other uh, situations, he mentioned it. And so one day he and I were at home and I said, you know, what is it that, is there someone you've heard? Is what, what, what makes you want to do that? And um, he said, John MacArthur and Pastor Butcher. <laughs> so you're in pretty good company there. <laughs> so anyway, thank you very much. You clearly, clearly have made an impact on, on our kids, and we really appreciate both of you. Thank you. Amen. Hey, this time we're going to have uh, Lee and Rose come up, give a testimony, and then we'll give you one last shot out there if you'd like to say something. Trying to convince her to stand where she always stands, so I know where she is. <laughs> when we're in Brazil and we speak, of course, Rose is always on my left. I want to mention first that she's very, very apprehensive about doing this. 
Now we've spoken in front of hundreds of people and hundreds of churches in Brazil, and there's never an issue. But today she has a, a real heartfelt issue with leaving the coaches. Uh, first, I'd like to say grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that's the way we open in Brazil. And I'd like to say a short prayer that I wrote special for tonight, and that is, bow our heads. Lord, fill our thirst with a love that grows stronger with time. Open our eyes and our hearts to the word and its light as it shines. Make us a life that will ripen like fruit on the vine. In Jesus' name. Now we're here to honor the pastor, and I guess in order to do that, I have to mention myself more times than I'd like to in rows. Um, but that's what you've done in four years from four minute testimony. We've gone down a road <laughs> that I could have never imagined as a retired individual speaking in the wrong language to people in Brazil and watching their faces. This is where it all took place. You can see on the screen the church here. And here, four years ago, I got on my knees with Pastor Gojo and Bowie and Rose and asked the Lord to put me in his hand. And I know he did. We'll get to that in a moment. And I know he did. Now I have a clicker, the one the pastor can't usually find. <laughs> I go to usual. Yeah. Now, it looks fairly complicated, so I'm going to push the button and see what happens. Oh my gosh. Well, three months after I got on my knees here, we got to Brazil. And of course, in Brazil, the family thought I should give that four minute testimony because we have five pastors in the family in Brazil in different denominational churches. And uh, after we had done the first three churches, they got the idea that they certainly would want to baptize me and that the testimony was just too short. That the people in Brazil really wanted to know what my life was like in Vermont and why it took me 50 years to find the Lord. And uh, uh, so this is a picture in Brazil in the spring as I came out of the ocean, sort of like Jonah. A whale didn't spit me up, but my brother-in-law held me under long enough. He was reasonably convinced that I should see Jesus before he let me up. <laughs> and as we came on shore, there were about, I don't know, 25 people maybe from our family there. And lots and lots of people had stopped to watch what was going on because we had brought the big wooden cross from Jamar's church down to the beach. And the people came out and... We're all applauding and jumping up and down as I came out of the water. And that all started right here. Now, this picture is interesting in that uh, it was just before we spoke in this church. And there were about 17 people in this church. It was a fallen down house, basically. And this was in the basement. And I called pastor and I said, look, I just spoke in front of 30 or 40 people and I'm reasonably certain they're all comatose. Nobody <laughs> smiled, nobody laughed, even with my bad jokes. I, I just can't believe this happened. Does this mean I'm doing the wrong thing? I, I should stop? And he said, no. He says, it just means that everybody was having a bad day and they weren't on the same page with you. He says, it'll be better the next time. Well, this is sort of the next time and my mouth just went dry. Um, and we're in this little church, and there's 17, 18 people, and the power goes off. And the people got up, and as you can see, they're all holding their cell phones. They had their cell phones on so that we could finish. Now, when pastor suggested to me that I had to do four minutes of testimony, I never had any idea of the things that would happen to me, the things that will happen to you when you realize that Matthew 28 is something you're really supposed to do. And you will run into people every day that need something from you, even if it's just a smile. 
And, and here I am in a church in Brazil speaking in the wrong language, by cell phone line. Now that's something that you just don't expect to happen. And uh, it, it amazes me to no end what goes on. And this is Rose and I speaking in a little nicer church, <laughs> which we, we often got to do. And then this picture, again, I was never prepared for some of the things four minutes of testimony would take me to. And it was his support, Ron's support. You know if you love him, you gotta love Ron too. You remember that? <laughs> I'm in prison. And I know I'm in prison because they locked the doors behind me. And I'm eating supper with the inmates. We had spoke to them earlier. And again, my walk in the latter part of my life, I end up in prison in Brazil <laughs> because of four minutes of testimony. They were so nice and kind to me and of all the people that we spoke to in Brazil, this is probably one of the places that needed us the most. And I might have given the most people the most encouragement because they were just so happy that I, I would, an American, it's hard to understand. Most people in Brazil have never seen an American, let alone a veteran or a pilot. In Brazil, pilots are actually revered. They're rich. And they were just so pleased that I could be there. A wonderful experience that I wouldn't have had if Pastor Goja hadn't encouraged me to continue. Now this one, you're going to remember his, his sermon. Um, that's a picture of my gravestone in Brownsville, Vermont. It's on a canvas, and I used to use it, and still do once in a while, depending on which sermon I kind of speak to in Brazil. And it has my name and the date of birth, and it'll eventually have um, my date of death, which I realized could be closer than I thought before June 7th. But nevertheless, the dash, do you remember the dash? Oh, thank you very much, Rick. He saw that I was in trouble. But do you remember the story of the dash that Pastor told us? And I tell the people in Brazil, I says, 10 years from now, this is what you're going to know about me if, if you walk by my stone. This is all people are going to know about you. Your whole life, everything you've done here, all the treasures you've got. I wear my leather jacket, as you can see at the very end, and, and say, well, this is an earthly treasure. You know, I can't take this with me. The trouble you had with your wife this morning, does it matter? Don't you think maybe you should store up a few treasures in heaven because your whole life is a dash? Now, Pastor says it was all right to steal that from him because it was, it was uh, something that everybody should know. And everything I've done and been in the last four years has been influenced by you, Mr. Humble, Pastor Humble, and Pastor Faithful. Pastor Trust, the three amigos. That was the advice they gave me when I left for Brazil the first time two and a half years ago to do this. They said, well, be faithful to the Lord. Trust in the Lord. And Billy said, be humble. And he explained to me about Bellum and the Donkey, which I'm sure you're all aware of. The Lord uses all kinds of things to get his word out. Pastor said, he can use a donkey, he can use you. Be <laughs> <laughs> humble. Man. My gosh. Well, and we've gone from that little church over time to the big churches. This church, there were 800 people. You can see my name is on a 50-foot screen. You need to be humble. When you turn around and you see that and you see the American flag and you're in Brazil, your heart goes right up in your throat and you say, my word, I need to say the right things. I need to touch the people's heart. Please, Lord. Put the words in my mouth so that I do and say the right thing for these people. He's done a great job so far. And this, this is June 7th of this year. This is 7 p.m. at night. We're sitting outside Texas Roadhouse. It's my birthday, June 7th. 
And I think you see Pastor's car there in the corner. He had just arrived. We were going to have dinner for my birthday. And I know, I know I'm in the Lord's hand. He's chased me. Remember Pastor said, if the Lord's chased you, you know you're in his hand. And that night, I walked through the valley of the shadow of death. <clears throat> I heard three <coughs> times the last time the doctor said, he says, it's a lot worse than I thought. He says, you, you probably won't be here in the morning, but I'm going to do everything I can. And prior to that, he had told Rose that it was worse than he had thought. And initially, he said, I had a 20% chance. So I went from 20 to zero. I wasn't afraid. I don't know how to say that to you and have you understand how wonderful it is to be in the Lord's hand. It's not afraid. I was prepared to meet the Lord. And as I started to lose consciousness, I thought, wow, Christ is going to be here any minute. I wonder if I'm standing in the right place. I just, I was just awestruck. And this is me. 16 hours later, as I regained consciousness, um, I remember looking up and seeing all the light and hearing all the little beeps and whistles and thinking for just a few moments that I was, I was disappointed. <laughs> I wasn't where I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to be with Christ. And then I realized I was still here and I was flabbergasted how I could still be here. And then you have two and a half weeks later. And you were there the whole night. Ah, uh, two and a half weeks later I'm riding home. I recovered so quick, it's, it, it's still, the doctor's still amazed I did that much. And there's some things I don't know exactly how to explain. Tonight I drove by the uh, Sunoco, or I'm sorry, Shell Station in Essex by J. Brown Drive. When I first started my company here 25 years ago, I had an office on J. Brown Drive. And the man that ran that stealth Shell Station. His name was Daniel Mike. Dan Mike. And in the beginning, the first three months especially, <clears throat> I didn't have money to eat. And he got to know me because I was in and out all day long. Uh, and after a few weeks, he says, Lee, you didn't get a hot dog today. And I said, well, yeah. And he said, you don't have money today to get the hot dog. I said, yes, sir. That's true. He says, well, he says, have you got a job today? And I says, oh, yeah, we got a little, little job to do. He says, you got paid on any of the ones you've had lately? And I says, well, not all of them yet. He says, well, get a couple of hot dogs and some gas. He says, and uh, uh, you can pay me on the weekend or whenever that check comes in. And he took care of me for three months that way. What do you say? How do you thank somebody that's done that for you? I mean, that's amazing. The only thing you can do is pass it on. Thank you, Bill. How do I thank you, Pastor? How? For humility, faith, and trust. I, I just don't know what to say, except I'm doing my best, Pastor. I'm wrong. Rose wants me to be sure to mention, because she's afraid to talk, that uh, um, that night, this is kind of back. Oh, look at that. That night, the pastor was there all night long. The doctor had said that he's probably not going to live. You should call the family and have them come in. <clears throat> and my daughter, Leanne, suggested that we call the pastor. And he came immediately. And Rhonda and my son was there, both my daughters, my son-in-law. And he sat with them all night. My surgery lasted five hours and 45 minutes. He prayed with my children. Prayed with Rosemary. How do you thank you for that? Just thank you. Anyway, and here's another surprise. And just a warning for you people that do your four-minute testimony. On Memorial Day, just before we came back to America on our last trip in Brazil, I had my first experience 
where someone came forward. I hadn't asked for those to come forward, you know that. But he came right up to the front, stood there in front of me, and said in Portuguese, he says, I need to be put in the Lord's hand right now. Right now. And I wasn't prepared. I didn't know what to do and what to say. But you know, the Holy Spirit had it all figured out, which I'm glad somebody did. And this young man, he came to Christ right there. How do I, how do I say what I feel? I go. And this is Rose and I, and next Sunday, we'll be speaking again at 8 p.m. in Brazil. Uh, we will have had a really good meal at Esperto at noontime. And uh, we will be doing this next weekend at this time. This is my family. And they mostly don't know what debt they owe to all of you. And when you, I'll back that up one clip here. I have something. You see, there's Rose and I standing alone on a stage. But you need to put yourselves in that picture. You all, you're all standing right behind them. Because we are Trinity in Brazil. We are speaking what you feel. Pastor Gocha, he's right on my right. And Rhonda's standing next to Rose holding her up. So when we're there, you're there. There you go. Humble, faithful, and trusting. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Know that these words are encouragement to Pastor and Rhonda, but I bet they're an encouragement to you too. Aren't they? And encouraged. Folks, each one of you can have an influence in someone's life. It may not be that big, but anything is big to the Lord. Seek to influence someone for Christ. Last opportunity for a couple more from the floor. Don't want to take it away from you. If not, we have a presentation right here. Yes. I'll keep it short because I'm forgetting more than I remember. But I do remember the first time I met Pastor. It was at a dinner that the church had here when we started. I remember how the children were drawn to him. And I remember all the adults sitting around the table. We had dinner. But I remember the kids all flocking around with his energy. And I thought to myself, you know, this man's going to draw more people later on. And um, I just want to thank you both for being a great team together for helping us, challenging all of us here to love God, to love others and each other, and to serve Christ, and to share Christ. And I just want to say that I'm encouraged that you're teaching other young pastors theology. Because some of those pastors, some of them may come here and pastor us. Amen. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Amen. Last chance, going once, twice, three times. All right, perhaps you didn't want to say something publicly, but when Mr. Poole is done with a couple more things, uh, we're going to have a fellowship over there in the school cafeteria, our fellowship hall, and um, please, private, private words, private words to Pastor and Rhonda, I know will be much appreciated. Please. <coughs> kind of gifts we can give the Gochers as they leave, because I, I agree with Lee. How do, you, how do you say thank you? You know, the Lord's, the Lord's been good. You can't, the, the uh, Holy Spirit in this room is, this, the, what we've heard tonight, that, that is the ministry, the ministry to people and, and changing people's hearts. But we do want to give them a token of our appreciation, something that they'll remember, 
first thing, the first thing we want to think about. This, is, this isn't real big, but I think I think this will be really neat in Pastor's office. This is this is one of this is from that red tree. I don't. Um, we happen to have an incredible photographer in our church, Betsy, and she finds some of the most incredible photos. And this is a photo just from a few weeks ago through one of our trees looking at this building. So we want you to have this. Is this where you see it? And so a couple more things. Um, we, have, we have a love gift that we'd like to give to you, to you and Rhonda for your family. So come on up here. And this, come on up, Rhonda. Yeah, you're gonna come here too. Okay. So the love gift for Pastor and Rhonda is in the amount of $3,665. This was collected over the last few weeks. But Pastor started another little tradition here with all the, with all the evangelist teams that came in. <clears throat> so we decided, I can't think of a better person to continue that tradition with than Rhonda. So we have a Rhonda gift that you have no access to. <laughs> you, okay, you, you taught us how to do this. So, so we are just doing what you taught us how to do. So we collected another gift that we call the Rhonda gift. It's for, totally for her. And I have another check here for Rhonda, the amount of $1,847. So just Rhonda. So, and there's some cards that people have given. I'll just, I'll just give you these cards. These are from different people that want to say thank you. And, uh, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you, and love you, and we'll miss you. And we will have you back to be with us again. So we will be back. And, and we will come visit you, too. Okay. Maybe about the time it's really springtime, about January, February. <laughs> <laughs> Need someplace a little warmer to take away a little bit. We might have to go visit them. So, thank you very much for being here tonight. I'm sure your heart is as blessed as mine is. And uh, let's pray together. We'll pray for the food before we go over. There's some cake and ice cream and some apple cider. Just a, some fun things in the in the end room in the fellowship hall in the school. Please come over and enjoy that time. Uh, Gochers will be there. You can say goodbye to them. Uh, and uh, just enjoy some fellowship time together. So let's stand together, and we'll close in prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you for this time that we've had together tonight. Lord, it's a blessed time of, of uh, fellowship that we've enjoyed here tonight and, and heard of the many, many blessings that have been brought about in people's lives because of the service of your, of your saints and your uh, servants that you brought here over five years ago. Lord, I just pray that you will bless the Gochers as they head to this new assignment that you've given them to train preacher boys for ministry. Lord, we'll miss them. We will pray for them. And Lord, we love them. And I just thank you for everything they've left behind here. And Lord, just continue to uh, bless our church, move us forward, help us to be disciples that, that we have been very clearly trained to be in, in your word and through the preaching of, of our pastor. Lord, I pray that you'll bless this uh, fellowship time together, bless the food that we're about to partake of, and Lord, just give us a sweet time together as we fellowship. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. You are dismissed. <laughs>